Welcome to the best of the Leon Charney Report. For over two decades, Leon Charney, one of the architects of the historic Camp David Peace Accords, has interviewed some of the most important figures in modern day history. These interviews provide a window into some of the most significant events of the last 50 years. In this excerpt, recorded in December of 1996, Leon Charney speaks with Peter Malkin, the man who captured Adolf Eichmann. Very appropriate, since this year is the 50th anniversary of Eichmann's trial and execution in Jerusalem. Hi, I'm Leon Charney, and this is the Leon Charney Report. And what on the subject uh, encompasses the minds of all of us today? Terrorism. And who else to bring on the show but a man named Peter Malkin. You probably know his name because you saw him in portraying the film, and Robert Duvall was the star of this film, and it was about the capture of Adolf Eichmann. And Peter Malkin is the man who literally captured him with a team of Mossad people, but he's kind of tackled him in Argentina on a lawn. So we have him on the show, and he's going to talk about that story, but a lot of other things, and especially terrorism. He's an expert, a former member of the Mossad, which is equivalent to the Israeli, I mean the American CIA, and the Shin Bet, which is the U.S. Secret Service. He's a man who knows a lot about what is happening in the world today, and will give you some fables about what happened in the past. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you. You've been all over the news lately because this film was produced by TNT, I believe, right? The man who kept it. The man who captured Eichmann. How did you get to Duval, or he got to you? It, uh, he got to me. Uh, one day, I was in Israel, and suddenly I got a call from the uh, United States, New York, and Robert Duval is on the phone. I said, yes. He said, I read your book, Eichmann, My Hands. It's one of the best books I read lately. And the dialogue is one of the best I read ever. So I would like to play, I like to be in this, uh, I want to buy the rights, and also I want to make a movie. He it. produced it, right? He produced it, he, yes. Directed it too? You no, know, it was directed by uh, Graham, his name, and he is in partnership with, uh, with Mar uh, Stan Margolis, that made the tone, the tone birds. Phone birds. Phone birds. From Australia. Uh, Duval played Eichmann, though, didn't he? Duval played Eichmann. The story is about Eichmann. I am just, you know, the other side of the story. And I think that the most important thing is to tell who is Eichmann, what made the Eichmann be. And through his answers, there's a dialogue between them in the room, and through the questions and answers, you, as a, the viewer, or the reader of the book, has to come to the conclusion who was Eichmann. And through him you can learn about other Germans. All right, what made the Israelis, uh, the Mossad, go after Eichmann? There are millions of, not millions, thousands of high-ranking Israeli, um, I mean, uh, German generals, I'm sure, Nazis, SS men. Why did they pick Eichmann? Look, after the Nuremberg tried, there hadn't been so many stars later, and one of the stars was Eichmann, and for us Jews, he was the biggest one, not only Jews, I think, for many So, in other people. words, he was the biggest catcher. He was the biggest, uh, biggest <coughs> man then. The, the, he was the head of the Jewish department. He was responsible for sending millions of people, six millions of Jews, and about another six million of other uh, nationalities, and about one and a half million of children to, 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 death. to death in the camps. He said, if you see the dialogue, I was only responsible for the transportation. Mm -hmm. So it looks like in those days, behind the desk, you could kill much more than with a pistol. And that's what he has done. He just sent them to the, to the camp. I know that you lost a lot of members of your family in the Holocaust. And, yes, uh, uh, you I've were, lost. You were born in Poland, but lived in, in, in Israel for a year, and then went back to Poland on, in the underground, is that it? It was very difficult to say uh, where I was born, because according to, you know, you never know where you're born, it's only you get the, the story from your parents. Right. So I, so I was born in Israel, and after one year, I went to Poland until the age of eight, and uh, we escaped again because we and my mother decided to... Why did you go back to Poland? After because my mother left uh, uh, some relatives and my sister and three children and a brother. And there was no way to take them out. There was no certificate at that So time. you went back to Poland to back bring to them Poland. out? Yeah, I, I came with You're my mother. It was only baby. one year. Right. So I lived with her until age, uh, age of eight and we didn't succeed to take out my sister and children and about 180 of relatives. 
So and uh, and we went back to Israel, and they died in Auschwitz. What year did you go back to Israel? It's about I think thirty-seven something. So like before that. the war. Before the war. And your but mother, your mother, already your mother went back with you. Yes. So you and your mother survived. Yeah, me and my mother and a, and a brother. And you, your brothers in Israel? No, they died already. Oh, uh, no, nobody but me. Peter, I say, uh, yeah, I have right. a wife and so, children. So, but so we you, say about the survivors. So, so you grew up. Let's. You had the forty-eight war. What did you do in the forty-eight war? What did I did? Yeah. I was in, in the army for sure, and I was an expert in uh, in explosive at that time. And uh, that's what I've done. After two years, I went. To, I, I became a, a secret service man. Mossad. No. It was Shin Bet? Shin Bet. At that time, 19, uh, 1950, it was very. It still was not so separated as now. But the head of the all of it, of Israel? all the security, was Israel. Israel. Of these things, two things. Was Ben Gurion was, was very involved with the secret service? Ben Gurion was very involved in the capture of Eichmann, for sure. But the head of the uh, head of the state is always is a very contact. The Mossad and the Shin Bet report to the it's Prime Minister. To, to to the Prime Minister. Right. And Israel is always like this. All right. So the Mossad was a fledging. Uh, there's a book written by uh, Raviv and uh, Mailman. Did you read that book on on Israeli intelligence? Did you ever read it? They want me to help them. Was it a correct book? <laughs> You know, they repeat the stories that you already heard, but they made it a little bit better. Better editing in some other news. To me, they came for some other reason. They said, what happened to the Mossad? What is wrong? I said, look, gentlemen, I don't tell about what is wrong. If you come to me and say what is good, maybe I will tell you also about the wrong. But I, after I work 28 years, I'm not going to tell you about my friend, what's wrong, what, uh, what is, is good because you want to make a, you make a book for money. So I didn't help them. All right, so now 1950, you're in a Mossad or Shin Bet. It was one security... 1950, I wasn't secret, secret, was secret, secret service. service. Shin Bet. Shin Bet. So they just, she, she wrote Moam uh, in Hebrew, in case anybody here is Jewish, who's listening to the show. We hope a few are, we hope a few aren't also. So we're ecumenical here. Now it's 1950, the Mossad is fledging, the state is fledging. It's going to cost a lot of money to do this operation. I'm sure there was a lot of political debate, knowing Israel is a political debate on whether they should sell Kashyavanikas or potato conditions. You know, everything's a debate. Are you talking about 1960? I'm 50. When you're. When you're ah, when, no, but the, the capture of I know, but this is 50. So obviously they have plans because Israel at that time was. Uh, had just come through the War of Independence. There's a lot of anger and animosity about the, uh, that, those words are too easy, about the Holocaust. Now it comes to 1960. The Mossad is pretty well organized. Israel is there. What happens? Harel comes in and says, we got a, we got a catch for you? Not exactly, you know. There was a, a small department talking about Nazis. I was not involved with it because normally what I have done, I was the head, at that time a small section, the head of the operations in, let's say, in Haifa and Tel Aviv, the head, and later I became when I went to the Mossad, I was the head of the operation I created, the head of the operation of the Mossad. It's a equivalent to a general. What do you mean by operations? By operation is doing operation. The Mossad, you know, the, the, the big, the, the, how is it? Because a lot of people don't understand between the FBI and the CIA, they don't understand between Shin Bet and the Mossad. The Shin Bet is all is internal, like the equivalent. Internal it's only inter internal security and also outside, let's say the embassies, everything. VIP, VIP, VIP security. Okay, security. Now, and the Mossad and the CIA is always bringing information from outside the country. And it's not defending, right? Bringing, collecting, and information. doing some operations. Okay, doing it is also bringing. A, a, this was an ex a, a exception. The the capture of Eichmann is an exception. In modern Middle East history, only one peace treaty has stood the test of time, the 1978 Camp David Accord. In the new documentary film, Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace, learn the true story behind the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time and its lessons for the future. The price of peace is very high to have this courageous man and my close friend killed. Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace. Now available at select stores including Barnes & Noble and online at Amazon.com. The preceding program was brought to you by Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace.